Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now I'm down here on the Pines course today. I'm going to do a little series called Break 80 and it's a Break 80 course management series and I want you guys to get involved in it. I want you to offer me advice, what you think I've done right, what I've done wrong, what you do differently. But the purpose of this is to bring you guys along on the journey that I'm doing to try and break my handicap, to try and get it down as low as possible. The target is scratch. In order to do that, I need to sort of break 80 and then work my way down. So this is going to be uh, probably a three part, depending on how long each part is, a three part 18 hole series on course management around the Pines course here at the Ashbury Golf Resort. I'm going to talk through every shot, what my decisions are, why I'm making certain decisions, and hopefully it can help people who are in a similar position to me who are trying to get their handicap down and let you think about something different for people who may make different decisions and see what the result is for me compared to what the result is for you. So this is the first hole here on the Pines. It's 406, it's a par four, and it's stroke index one. So it's the hardest hole on the course. Now on my left hand side here is out of bounds all the way down the, the left hand side. But on the right hand side, there is a world to hit. So you can miss as right as you want really. There's another two holes that way, you could, you've got the world right. So what you don't wanna do is go left. Now my shot shape is straight to a draw and my bad shot is a miss right. It's either a, a straight push right or it's a slice right. So I've got the world out to the right. So I'm gonna aim down the right hand side of this fairway and I'm gonna aim across those trees, try and draw it into the center of the fairway. And if I miss and hit it straight, I'm safe. If I slice it, I'm straight. And if I do happen to just slightly pull it, then I've got a lot of space on the left-hand side. Whereas if I went straight down the fairway um, and then did a pull, I'm likely to bring the out of bounds into play. And that's the worst thing that I want to do. I just want to get off the tee, be in play and give myself a second shot. So let's do that. So I'm using driver off this tee. It's a long way. It's 406 yards. So I need to get as far down as possible. First tee shot is never going to go as far as you think it's going to go. So I'm hoping this will go around about 250 yards and give myself a nice little seven iron in. And I'm going to aim down the right hand side and try and draw it in from that. And that's just started straight down the middle and just peeling off to the right. But that's where the green is. That is a great shot to start and it keeps me in play ready for a great second shot. Okay, second shot, I've got 124 yards in, so that's gone 282. It's starting to bounce, get a little bit firmer out here, which is lovely. Um, the wind is slightly down off the left-hand side. Now, this green, the pin is on the top tier on the left-hand side. Um, so I want to try and feed it in from the left. But to be honest, I just want to get onto the green and have a two pot and walk off with a par on the hardest hole on the course. So I've got 124, I'm going to hit a pitching wedge. It's not a full pitching wedge. I don't know how receptive the greens are because I've not been on them yet. So it's just a cautious first shot. Don't want to go pin seeking just yet. I just want to get a par and walk on. So 124, slightly downhill lie. So I'm going to aim a bit left and let it feed in. And that is right on line. If I get a good, oh, yeah, that pink pitch right next to the pin and has run all the way to the back. So I've actually hit that a little bit too hard. So just caught that a little bit too hard, sort of a little bit too well. It landed exactly the yard as it pitched right next to the pin, but the greens aren't that receptive, especially coming out the rough. So it's gone to the back of the green and now I've got a tricky up and down. So this is actually pitched right next to the green, right next to the pin. Um, but then has rolled all the way down to the back here. The greens are firming up now. We've had a lot of water come in, but now they're firming up. Now this is one of those decisions where I'm like in a little bit of two minds of whether to pot it or chip it. Yeah, not bad. Not bad, I think it's closer than I would have got if I'd have chipped it, so it was definitely the good decision to putt it. 
but now I've given myself a tricky pot for par that I could really do with getting. Right, okay, pretty straight pot. So straight at it, nice and firm. Don't want to start bogey. Yeah, that'll do. Good, a good par to start considering there's every chance of leaving that put short going back down the hill and then that would have been a really really tricky two part okay second hole here is 139 yards from this tee it's downhill it's playing 131 so it's a pitching wedge for me now the pin is back right and there's a bunker long on the right and there's a bunker short on the right so the safe play for this is to just aim for the middle of the green get to the middle of the green two port walk off with a par this is stroke index 17 so i wouldn't get a shot here anyway so i need to par this to maintain what i'm doing i'm currently one under on my handicap but it's the final score that does it so i've got 131 yards the wind is slightly left to right so i'm just going to aim for the center of the green if the wind pushes it towards the pin even better if it stays there on the center of the green then we've got an easy should have an easy two pot to do so center of the green let the wind drift it in have a nice two pot hopefully just pull that slice that's going to be the left side of the green yeah so slightly pulled it so it's going to be left side of the green but i'm on the green so it should be a nice two pot nothing stupid walk off with a par okay so we've made it to the left center of the green really we are pin high but give ourselves a bit of a long pot really so this will be a good two pot to be able to just walk off with par now what i'm aiming for when i'm this far away is i want to be within a putter length of the pin basically because i feel confident that within this length i can i can tap it in so I don't want any heroics. It's just a putter length. Now I think this is gonna break from the left to the right. So just anywhere within a putter length. I've pushed it slightly. Good for speed, but I have pushed that. Right, so this putt is a little bit, so this putt's a little bit left to right. Do feel confident from this. A little bit out of where I really want it to be. So, nice and positive and walk off with a par so by not playing that pin and by playing the green i've given myself a pretty i made it difficult but an easy two pot so through two holes i'm actually level par at the moment um, and i'm actually one under what would be classed as my handicap because i did get a shot on the first so so it's good course management it will keep you in the game not doing silly things and getting your ball out of play where you're easily doing three shots off the tee it's all about keeping the ball on the green and trying to just two put your way around Right, so I've actually missed it by a long way. I've come across onto the sixth hole. Um, but I'm a firm believer if you're gonna miss, miss big. Because the trees on the left hand side there would have kept me well in trouble. So by coming out this far, I've actually given myself a good angle into this green. So I've got 130 yards, slightly out downwind, and I've got a 52 degree. Now the wind is slightly in off the right, so I'm gonna aim for the right hand side and hopefully bring it into the green from there. looks good if it's long enough yeah so it's on the green should be a nice two pot now and be able to walk off this with a par so it did come up a little bit short here probably could have done with a pitching wedge it was a big 52 um, but i'm on the green so what i've got now is a right to a left to right pot that hopefully i can get close within a putter's length and walk off with a par and then so far I'll be level par through three holes, which is absolutely fantastic. It's a great start and sets you up for the rest of the round. So again, just pick your line within a putter's length. Oh, and I've put that a little bit past. So my pace control today is not 
brilliant outside of a putter's length and what that's doing is just putting pressure on me to get these pars I need to really work on speed control with these right line it up be positive okay and that's a four so that's another par so I'm level par now through three holes just by doing simple course management I know that last tee shot wasn't amazing and I missed left but I missed left enough that gave me a great angle in I'm a firm believer if you're gonna miss miss big um, unless obviously there's rubbish on left or right but uh, so far so good three holes down level par so the fourth hole here is very much a risk reward hole because it's only 261 uh, it is stroke index 15 so it's easy on the card so you can go for this in one but where the trees are on the right the other side of that there's a pond short and then there's two ponds after it so the right hand side is pretty dead left hand side is safer but the tree line at the back is out of bounds so if you're going to go for this you need to be wary of the left because the left comes in quicker than the right so it is a birdie opportunity but I want to play it a bit safer because I'm level par through three and I want to keep this round going I don't want to do something stupid by going out of bounds and ruining my card at this stage so I'm just going to hit a hybrid up to that tree after that last one it went left a lot so I'm going to aim a little bit righter and see if that tendency is still happening and then the fairway on the left will leave me just a little chip on with a wedge and I have drawn it it's going into some trees okay it's come out so what that's telling me today is my hybrids are a little bit hooky so I either need to sort that out or put this away for the round so by actually taking the hybrid what I did is I took this out of play so that was a big hook off the tee if I'd used a three wood or a driver I'd be in that field somewhere so I've kept myself in play by using the hybrid now I've got 102 yards, it is not the best angle to this flag. The flag is on the top tier, so I want to get it back there as much as possible to give myself a chance at a par. But now I'm scrambling a little bit because I'm out of position. So I've got 52 and I'm just going to knock it up there and hopefully get on that top tier. I didn't quite catch all that, so it's going to need a good bounce. I think no I'm on the bottom tier so I've given myself now a difficult two pot just by being out of position on the tee shot right okay so it's these pots that if I keep leaving myself I'm going to end up racking scores onto my card so I need to get a little bit closer but it's not a bad first pot I just need to make sure of this now yes so we're still level par through four which is a bit of a surprise that's a good two pot i think i would have been happy with a three pot there i need to work on the hybrid because that's pulled left twice now um, so i need to just decide if that's going to stay in the bag but let's move on to the fifth which is a par three so the fifth hole here on the pines is from it says on the board from the yellows it's 170 yards but actually the tees are a little bit forward so it's playing 141 yards today it's downhill and it's a fairly easy par three but if you are a bit of a slicer there's a pond on the right to catch your ball um, it will feed in off the left and feed down to the green now the pin is at the back left so there's a lot of green to work with for this so i'm going to try and aim straight for the pin on this because if I hit centre of the green, it's going to leave me about 20 feet for, for a birdie. Now for me, par threes are normally a bit of a bane of my life. They're all the ones that I lose shots on. At the moment, my putting is keeping me in this game. Those putts from six feet in where I feel like I'm stronger than most people um, are keeping me in this game. And that's not going to last forever. I'm not going to be able to do that for 18 holes. I could easily be two or three over by now, but I'm not, I'm level par. So I need to get that putting better on the first putt. But for this, it's just straight at target, nice little nine iron, it's not a full one. And just try and get it on the green and continue this par run. And if a putt drops for birdie, even better. So a nice little easy nine iron. And that 
straight at it now just leaking a bit to the right so center of the green oh it's actually big i've just stopped on the bank it was actually a little bit big but uh should be able to chip it up and down hopefully okay so i've come a little bit long i've hit the green and just bounced and i'm quite lucky to stay up here because over the back here is is dead now what i'm thinking in this is i want to be within a putter around the hole basically and that will give me a good chance of being up and down i'm going to give it a roll at the hole but i don't want to be too aggressive trying to get it to the hole and then run past because there is now a downhill slope running back towards the camera so it's just a little 58 i want to land it just onto the green and then let it roll out and if it's if it's short it's short if it gives me a chance at the hole even better but i don't want to be too aggressive and then leave myself another one of them six footers to try and scramble a par again so just outside of putter length but i should make that right okay so if i look at where i want it to be i want it to be inside that where it'd be a tapping this is just in that range where it can get a little bit like yippy on pots and now i've i am pretty confident from this sort of range of but again i'm just leaving myself these pots that can just miss and add numbers onto the scorecard this should have been an easy par whereas now it's just a little bit of a yippy one but we got it we got it so another par a nice well par it wasn't easy but we got up and down let's go on to the sixth which is a par five where i now need to be taking advantage of my distance although it is into wind to try and at least get par but hopefully get a birdie and maybe finish this part one under par okay sixth hole final hole on this part is actually it's a short par five it's 441 yards which is actually a long par four so it's a great opportunity now to be getting a birdie um, at worst a par it is slightly into wind so i can be known to balloon this up a bit so a good drive leaves me a mid iron a balloony drive leaves me like a four iron in so you know it's it's not the end of the world now for those of you who are slicers my bad shot is right right is dead it is red staked i think or i can see it might be out of bounds but you don't want to go right either way left is also the third hole so left is a little bit safer but it leaves you blocked out with trees now you could play this safe and you could hit a hybrid then an iron and chip on but i want to take advantage of the par five so i'm going to hit driver down there um, and it could be a good decision it could be a bad decision but the one driver i've hit today was good so i've got confidence with it i'm going to aim straight down the middle because um, i'd rather favor the left side because right is completely dead and that's a good hit it's just gone left so it's probably going to be left side of those trees now that could be in the rubbish um, or i could be blocked out but what it will be is in play if i'd have gone right and it left it out to the right i'd have been dead so it's a little bit i bailed out on this one so by coming left i've actually got lucky again um, i'm only about 20 feet away from those trees i think if i had landed in there then i'd have actually just chipped out because what i didn't want to do is compound the error with another error but as it turns out i'm just in the rough here on the left side of the third hole i've got 164 yards to go in so that's gone about 280 which is a great drive for me and this is now an opportunity to get a birdie but i don't know where the pin is from here so it's just a case of finding the middle of the green and and hopefully have a two pot uh, so i've got 164 in i've got an eight iron and hopefully we can get this on the green I've hit it well and it's dead on line if that's the right club it's on the green oh that could be very good that could be really good so just walking up to the green and i have hit a great shot in there i've got a chance here for an eagle but this should be a definite birdie 
So I should be easily one under par now, walking off this sixth. If I three put this, I think I'm gonna give up golf. So golf is all about taking advantage of your strengths. And for me, my strength is distance off the tee and with irons and putting. And I've used the distance off the tee to my advantage there. And now I've given myself a great chance of an eagle. Um, it's gonna come in off the left-hand side and fall away over to the right. What I don't want to do is ram this about six foot past, but I want it to get to the hole for an eagle chance, but I just want it to be a tap-in birdie if possible. Nothing stupid. Yeah, so I just left it out, but it's a tap-in birdie. And that puts me one under through six holes. Now, Hopefully what that's done, and some people may be saying, but why when you play the vlogs with Dan and Lester, you like rubbish, basically? Because it's for entertainment. It's trying to hit the worldy shot every time. It's trying to hit driver everywhere. Whereas actually, when I go out and play normal golf, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to just stay in play. And if I play actually this type of golf more often, my handicap will come flying down and so can yours. It's all about good course management. And for me in that six holes, the course management has kept me in it. I'm one under par through six holes and I can move on to the next 12 on break 80 with nine shots in hand basically because I'm now one under um, the, the par for the course. Now, I have hoped you've enjoyed part one. Part two is out tomorrow at the same time as today. So it'll be out at four o'clock tomorrow where I'll play seven through till 12. Um, and please comment down below, what would you have done differently, if anything, to the choices I've made? Or have you got any advice for me for what I'm doing? I'd love to get advice from people who are better golfers than me. But what I'm aiming to do with this series is to show you how better course management can hopefully make you score better and help you reduce that handicap. Instead of taking driver everywhere, playing to your strengths, avoiding your weaknesses and hopefully scoring better. If you are new to the channel, please do subscribe by hitting that subscribe button down below. And if you've liked this video, give it a like. But for the time being, I'm going to get off to the 7th and I'll see you all there tomorrow.